So, another emotional state. I, uh, I didn't know what to do, so I, I, I got a flight attendant to come over. And I explained to her what had happened, and I said, has this ever happened before? What are the course of events that I needed to take to, to fix this? And she said, never heard of it, never seen this, don't know what to tell you, but you need to go, as soon as you land in O'Hare, you need to go to the TSA counter, and you need to explain to them what's happened and, and see what they can do to help you. And I agreed, that, yeah, it was probably the right thing to do. But then I remembered uh, when the plane finally landed that I actually have the phone number for the counter at the Florence airport, the airline that I was flying. So as soon as you get on the ground and the plane lands and they're taxing, they tell you it's, you're free to use your cell phone. So I did. And I called the counter and I got this nice young lady on the phone. And I'm thinking, well, this is the place for me to start. Maybe they can tell me who was in front of me, who was behind me, help me understand how I need to locate whose computer I have because the presumption was that they had mine. So I got some discouraging words that, you know, there's some federal regulations that obviously are regulated for our protection to where the airline won't dismiss any information and let anyone know of names and so on and so forth of who's on the aircraft. So uh, at that point, I, I knew I didn't have the TSA um, counter at the Florence Airport's direct number, so I asked this nice young lady, can you connect me? And she says, I'll do better than that. I'll go talk to him. So she put me on hold, and she comes back after a couple minutes, you know, and I was at the back of the plane, so I had plenty of time to wait. That was part of it, too. Um, and then she comes back with these more discouraging words saying that, well, TSA has informed me that there's nothing that they can do to assist you. And Again, I'm at, I'm at a point where I'm discouraged, for one. Uh, I, I, I'm just questioning why is all of this happening to me on this Monday morning. And I'm, I'm suddenly realizing that it's like being on an island. I can't, I can't communicate with anybody that can help me. So, once again, I say, okay, can you give me their number? I'm going to try and take control of this situation, and I'm going to call TSA and talk to them. So I called them up, and talk to them direct and you know they blatantly told me that there wasn't anything that they could do so I asked I said do they have any surveillance video and they said no and then I asked well I see the police is out there constantly do they have any surveillance video so he said that he would check and he'd have to call me back so I gave him my phone number and um, he called he said he would call me back later so consequently it was my turn to finally get up out of the seat, move on, and get off the airplane. So I, I said to myself, okay, while I was on the airplane, I tried to turn this laptop on by hitting the power button, and it didn't come on. So the battery must be dead. So I've got to go into the terminal and find a, an outlet using the charger that I had with my computer, and because they were both Dell, it was going to work. Um, I said, uh, I got to go find a power outlet because I got to get in this laptop and I got to see if I can find out some information to be able to figure out whose it is. So um, I think it was probably about gate 35 or 36. So I was way, way beyond getting right to the, <clears throat> to the terminal. Um, so I had a long walk. So every left and every right I looked, I saw these outlets and everybody had their cell phones plugged into them their laptops plugged into them, their camcorders plugged into them, charging their batteries. And the last thing I wanted to do is go up and ask somebody if I could use their plug and then get stuck in a situation to where I'm fumbling around on a foreign computer and have to explain to them what I'm doing with the morning I'm having already. I figured, I don't want to mess with that. I made it all the way to the end of the terminal and the last gate I spotted a 110 outlet with somebody that was using the plug underneath. So I walked up and I began to take the laptop and the charger out of the bag. I put them together, I plugged it in, and as I'm plugging it in, this voice from nearby says, that plug doesn't work. So I turned, and it was the gentleman that was sitting there that had, and I traced the plug from the wall to his laptop, realized that he was using the one below. So he offered to allow me to use the plug and I said, that's very kind, thank you. So I went to plug it in, I plugged it in, hit the power button, nothing happened. And I'm thinking, great, the battery's dead, 
somebody's got my computer and I can't even get in this one to figure out whose it is. And then the gentleman says, well, that's, that's strange. So he un, I unplug mine and he plugs his back in and suddenly he realizes that his battery charger on his laptop is no longer working either. And he says, it's not working. So I said to him, I said, with the morning I'm having, I'm going to write a book about this event. What is your name? And he was an, a young Arabic guy. And he says, my name is Kareem. And I said, well, how do you spell that? And he said, K-A-R-E-E-M. And I said, thank you. And we exchanged morning greetings and just, you know, just left each other and smiling and such. And, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and break in and say this now. After, um, after I actually got on the Internet and could actually access information on my bride's computer, I looked up what this gentleman's name meant, and it meant generosity. And I thought, wow, that's, that's a story in itself because under the circumstances of what I needed to do, it was very generous of him to offer that plug even though it failed. So at any rate, I made it to the TSA area and I, and I started talking to this supervisor and the supervisor was basically telling me that I was going to have to walk a 15 mile happy run to go to the TSA you know, office to talk to somebody there and he really was offering me no solution to my problem. So I said, okay, I would much rather go to baggage claim and assure that I even got my suitcase for this week instead of going there. So I went down to baggage claim, made it all the way down there, and lo and behold, off in the corner, away from the conveyor, I saw a outlet. And I said, okay, I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna try this again. So I went over there, I plugged the charger into the laptop, plugged the charger into the wall, and lights came on. I'm thinking, great. So in the background, I'm listening to the conveyor going around, there's nothing on it, and I said, well, I got some time. So I began to look at some activity on this laptop, so finally the screen pops up after I hit the power button. And um, obviously it was, it was password protected. Then I realized, okay, I, I, I've got to figure out some tangible thing on this laptop to be able to identify whose it is to be able to make some sort of connection. So I flipped it over, and there was a sticker that was half peeled up on the bottom of it. And on the sticker, it had a, uh, a, a school district. And I said, okay. So I picked up my cell phone, and I called my bride, and I said, can you do me a favor, and can you Google this uh, school district and get me a phone number? So she goes on and she gets me several phone numbers. I said, just, just give me the main number. So I got the main number and I, 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 I said, thank you. And I told her I loved her and I told her what was going on. And she was in utter disbelief as well. And, uh, but she was very helpful and, and you know, was wishing me the best. And, 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 you know, under the circumstances, I mean, she was emotional. And it was, it was a tormenting thing to have to get off the phone with her. But I got off the phone with her and I, I dialed this number and I went through this chain of people and finally got to a, a gentleman in the tech department. And I explained the situation to him. He'd obviously never experienced this before either. But on that tag, there was a number and it was an identification number. So I gave him the identification number and I told him what model laptop it was. And he says, well, okay, we only have six of those models in the entire school district. So I in turn sat there patiently waiting as he went through one, two, three, four, and five, and finally the sixth model number, and none of them fit that identification number. So there's silence on the other end of the line, and he's still trying to figure out whose laptop it is. And then he brings me some more discouraging words and says, I'm sorry, but there's a strong possibility that this is a stolen laptop that's been removed from our system because I can't identify it. 